Um, so we are trying to bridge the gap. Again, this is a very big, complicated, and uh, you know, a challenging uh, gap that I'm speaking about. Abai Biosciences is an end-to-end -end technology IP-focused company, right? I mean. We can help anyone who's researching on stem cells, give the software, hardware and material support, right? And then there can be a technology transfer, uh, uh, you know, a discussion. Um, so welcome Manish uh, to the LIF uh, podcast uh, that we have for season two and se episode two. Yesterday, we shot the first episode with Edgar. So welcome to the show. And uh, uh, like, you know, Lyft podcast is purely about founders like you who want to go to the other markets, who want to connect with other lifters and like, you know, build their business onto a global platform. So just to introduce you to all the lifters who are uh, like, you know, listening to this podcast, uh, Manish is the director at uh, AVA Biosciences. He's a part of Lyft Global Cohort 2022. Uh, as per my understanding, he has got offices in Chennai and Bangalore, but Chennai is again his R&D place where he works at. And uh, what he is trying to do, uh, with my limited understanding again, he is trying to democratize example life sciences or example healthcare. And he's trying to do that with building world-class 3D printers or 3D bio printers. That's what he could say about it. So maybe um, stage is over to you, Manish. If you want to briefly maybe add on top of what I spoke about uh, Avia Biosciences, about your startup, what you do. So it's over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Suraj. First of all, thank you for inviting me uh, to the podcast. Um, the sounds looks like a good platform. I think it's been really long, you know, after June, July, uh, again, reconnecting to Suraj and also to other, uh, you know, Lyft cohorts. Uh, it's a good opportunity. Uh, so yeah, let me just, uh, you know, give a brief about Avai Biosciences. So why the name Avai? Avai basically, so the end goal of myself and my team in this company is to reach to a point where we can do organ 3D printing possible, right? So. Now, I think it's it's a it's a buzzword at this point of time, organ 3D printing, because we are talking about a one is to ten ratio of transplants. Be it any organs, um, you know, for every ten people who are looking for a transplant, there is only one availability, uh, and that's why there's a lot of scarcity and a lot of people are losing their lives because of this. Um, so we are trying to bridge the gap. Again, this is a very big, complicated, and uh, you know, a challenging. Uh, gap that I'm speaking about and uh, how are we doing it, right? So um, I will introduce myself as an entrepreneur first. Uh, so this is my second startup. I uh, started my first startup right out of my college. Uh, again, uh, I, I'm an electrical engineer. So my first startup was again into 3D printing where, uh, you know, uh, we manufactured different kinds of thermoplastic resin 3D printers back then. Uh, majorly catering into uh, automobile, aerospace, and MSMEs. Um, so it went well till 2019, and we all know what happened in 2020. Uh, and during this course of time, right, uh, the whole medical infrastructure was going haywire. But uh, let me tell you that uh, by the end of 2018 itself, I had this idea about medical 3D printing and the impact that it can make over a period of time. So. I always wanted to get into that particular domain uh, whatsoever and build products there. Um, and I would say 2020 when, you know, the whole world uh, got into the halt. Um, and uh, even my startup took a big hit, you know, like everyone else. And, uh, you know, I had to take an exit from that startup, uh, which was not a very good thing and not a very good time. Uh, but since, uh, you know, the options that I had was either to, uh, you know, go and join someone and, uh, you know, work on a different domain or to start something else, right? Because ideas are, uh, you know, humongous. There are numerous ideas, which everyone has that I believe. But uh, since I had this medical 3D printing and it was the right time, right? Because everyone was speaking about, uh, you know, nutrition, supplements, bioteams and all of these, uh, you know, the focus completely went down to health sector from the scattered sc uh, scope that you had and in a way uh, it's a good thing because every individual you know started thinking about themselves 
uh, you, uh, obviously whatever happened during those two years was really bad. Uh, we lost a lot of near and dear ones. Um, but again, you know, we have to move on. But uh, post-COVID, uh, last January 2021 is when, uh, you know, I started Away Biosciences in a complete manner where I started hiring people. And I already had a product because before starting the company, we already had um, a prototype ready of a 3D bioprinter, which could print tissues, right? So what exactly, uh, it, I would... I would you know, uh, describe this in a layman term on what we are trying to do, how we are trying to get into a stage where we can print organs, right? So currently our focus is on building these printers. So we manufacture these printers and uh, we, we, man we develop our own software and we are developing our own materials too. How do we work basically? So we work in a collaborative model. We collaborate with research institutes. We collaborate with people, with PhDs, with doctors who are working on tissue engineering, who are working on regenerative medicine, or maybe pharmaceutical companies, right? Who does drug testing and drug discovery. Uh, we, get, we get inputs from them since, uh, you know, my team, uh, you know, comprises of experts uh, from engineering background, right? And uh, not exactly from the bio background. So that's why we need uh, these experts from biomedical field to help us reach where we intend to reach. Uh, so talking about it, so our printers can print scaffolds. Scaffolds are nothing but a support structure, right? Now let's say, for example, let's take example of skin. Let's say there is a, you know, accident and there's a major injury happened. And uh, traditionally, currently what doctors are doing it, they are taking skin from elsewhere from the body and, you know, uh, doing the surgery because there is no alternative. Now, by using 3D bioprinting, what you can do is you can print the whole uh, skin, basically, by using something called as biomaterials. Biomaterials along with cells are called bioinks. Now, that is something which is 3D printed layer by layer to make sure that a scaffold is printed. And, that, and it is incubated, uh, you know, observed over a period of time on how the cell multiplies, how the cell grows, and how it became, becomes an implantable tissue. So... We are at a stage where, you know, we are able to build the tissues uh, along with the cells. But then the stage comes where we are talking about the complicated thing, which is the blood vessels, the vascular structure. Now to reach there, the research is still ongoing. Not only us, even uh, the different universities worldwide, different startups worldwide are working on it. Um, so that would be the next level. And slowly, step by step, we want to reach to a point where complete organ can be 3d printed without any complication now you definitely I'm, I'm talking about something which is you know maybe 10 15 years or maybe more than that uh, you know away from what we are talking about but you know it has to be started somewhere it has to be started at some point of time so uh, here we are developing democratizing healthcare like suraj mentioned by using these products by giving the solutions to researchers or maybe to pharmaceutical companies to basically enable a tissue engineering printing happen by using our solutions. So that's where we stand at this point of time. Uh, so we are less than two year old company right now. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's where we stand at this point of time. So I think uh, that's, that's a good enough brief Suraj uh, to start with. Perfect, perfect, Manish. So I think I'm I'm pretty much uh, pumped in terms of like you know you have a great vision in terms and again it's a big audacious goal in terms of printing a organ uh, in a, a 3D printing manner. But but I'm sure it's the first steps that you know that's going to take you. So I think pretty um, uh, all the best uh, for you. And again, uh, congratulations uh, to you again for uh, launching uh, Mito Plus um, uh, at the Bangalore Tech Summit. So what I heard is that's one of the best or one of the most advanced uh, 3D bioprinters in India. That's what available. Uh, so again, congratulations to you for that. Thank you. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit uh, in, a, in a maybe a sentence about uh, about Mito Plus? <laughs> yeah. So uh, Mito Plus. So mitosis. First, first of all, mitosis uh, is a process of cell duplication. So that's how the name comes, Mito. We wanted to keep it in and around tissue engineering, and that's why Mito. Mito Plus is an advanced, uh, you know, printer with features like you know temperature cooling, HEPA filter inbuilt UV curing. So basically, we are trying to make sure that uh, anyone who is researching on a tissue 
does maximum of work with one printer instead of getting into multiple instruments. So I would say to sum up, that's the major advantage or that's why we call it as an advanced bio printer at its price range. Uh, you know, we are catering it to uh, the, the uh, audience to the startups in medical uh, technology, to the startups in biomedical engineering, uh, to make sure that they do their research, uh, you know, within specific period of time, instead of reinventing the wheel, we give the solutions uh, to them in terms of technology. So that's, uh, that's the major advantage of Mito Plus, I can say, yeah. Perfect, perfect. I think I'm sure Mito is going to do great. And I think I've been hearing amazing reviews about Mito as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so now, coming back to uh, away biosciences like so what is the team strength that you have right now or like you know um, uh, uh, spread across and what is the revenue chart that you're looking at because you're very young in terms of company and again hardware is very hard uh, to build it's not just pure software so you have got hardware you've got the supply chain challenges and then building a team all put together so 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 what is the team structure right now and maybe what is the revenues that you're looking at sure so uh, currently my team size is 17 people. So we have divided it into mainly engineering team, bio team, and uh, the team looking after the admin and accounts. So uh, there are 12 people uh, under uh, the uh, design, which is the uh, mechanical, I would say engineering domain. Uh, we have two uh, people, uh, uh, especially working on the biomaterials. Um, and uh, then we have people uh, taking care of the admin and account. So overall, the team comprises of 17 people, uh, including myself. Um, and uh, then, so the first year, so, uh, you know, one major takeaway from my first startup was, you know, however big the idea is, however great the invention is, everything boils down to revenues, cash flows, profit and loss. You know, that's something, uh, you know, we have to take care of because that's how our company has grown. We have seen this from the greatest names, uh, you know, across the world. So that's why apart from research, along with research, uh, the revenue was a very important thing for us. That's why the company is generating revenue from the first day uh, of its inception. So in the first year, we have generated around 150,000 USD. This particular year, we are looking at around 300,000 USD of revenues. Uh, you know, uh, why the number increased because we have, uh, we have got a distributor from the same background who has committed us 50% of our revenues. Uh, so going forward in next couple of years, I'm, I'm looking at revenues of, uh, you know, going up to three to four mil just from the printer sales and biomaterial sales. But again, this is not the major, uh, you know, uh, milestone that I want to achieve our major market that we want to tap in is the market where the end application goes. For example, like I spoke about, uh, you know, the skin grafting market, which is growing on a daily basis. And a lot of people are coming in with their own invention. Likewise, there is cornea, liver, and, you know, there's so many organs. So to tap into each and every market, we are talking about a humongous number. So that's where my final aim is. But just to make sure that, you know, we are doing research and also justifying it, by making revenues uh, also. So that's where we stand at this point of time. Yeah. Perfect. Amazing. So what I understand is you've found the product market fit and, and that's amazing that you've uh, got the revenue even before building the product itself. So that's in a very strategic, very nice manner. Uh, however, in terms of product certification, patents, like, so how have you built a moat around it? Uh, do you want to talk about that maybe? Sure. So, so see, basically the company, uh, I think one of, the major uh, quote to the investors or the pitch that I have is Abai Biosciences is an end-to-end -end technology IP focused company, right? I mean, revenues, cash flows are there, but the more we research, the more the valuation of our company goes, the more we value the company. Um, so that's why, you know, all the products that we have. So we have around two bio printers right now, a basic version and an advanced version. Both are uh, basically uh, protected uh, with patents, uh, be it design or be it utility. So currently we have around five design patents, already five, uh, and uh, around three utility, uh, and I would say another two process patents. So bio, I'm, I'm speaking about bioprinting because that's something uh, you know people know that we work on, which is already there in the market. Uh, since we are talking about pharmaceuticals here, the major, the long-term uh, vision of the company also comprises of building 
a pharmaceutical 3D drug tablet printer, right? Where basically you can mix three to four different APIs. API means active pharmaceutical in ingredient and excipients, basically, which comprises a tablet. So our aim is to basically control. So, uh, Suraj, in today's date, if you see the paracetamols that we consume are of a standard dosage forms, right? But your body or my body need not have, you know, ask for the same dosage. Maybe you need a lesser than, you know, 650 mg, maybe I need more than that. But there is no way of customizing this particular dosage forms. Also, controlled release is something that that's why we are basically uh, directed by the doctor to take it only after dinner or to take it only after having food uh, because you know it can be a quick release tablet or it can you know uh, release over a period of time we do not have control over it but by using 3d printing as a tech what you can actually do is control the whole dosage form and also have a timely release you know uh, maybe one o'clock in the afternoon uh, evening five night accordingly so Again, we are targeting only for, you know, chronic patients who are consuming more than three to four uh, tablets a day or for, uh, you know, cardiovascular diseases where it is mandatory to have four, uh, you know, uh, dosage after the first mild attack. Uh, so I would say we are there. So in that particular product, we have not basically uh, publicized that product yet, but uh, we have we are looking to file around 15 patents on that particular product, which includes design, process, utility, everything, right? Because the print head and everything that we, we are building it from scratch. And uh, if you see only three to four companies in the globe are working on this particular pharmaceutical drug 3D printing, right? So that's something we are looking at uh, a, a long-term scope of the company. But apart from that, uh, the products that we have built are all filed under design patents and utility. And, uh, you know, we have a dedicated team. Uh, I wouldn't say a part of a full-time uh, team, uh, but a dedicated team of lawyers and uh, IP uh, people who are taking care of the patents and the overall, uh, you know, intellectual property. Oh, wow. Pretty cool. Yeah. So I think it, it's, it's well, well, well packaged together. That's what I see. I mean, like, you know, you're pretty ready for, you know, the slow, steady growth of it and parallelly in terms of expansion. Now, what I want to next try to understand is, so from the Lyft cohort or from the Lyft network, uh, what are your expectations? Uh, like, you know, so are you looking at um, um, doing an R&D or a collaboration with a Lyft or are you looking at co-selling, looking at the segments that you spoke about, like, you know, researchers and pharmaceutical companies across the globe? So, so what, are, what is your expectation from the Lyft community to co-sell, to co-partner, to co-build? Sure. So what I see is Lyft uh, community after uh, the cohort, which I attended, Suraj, the community is huge. And I met a lot of alumni of Lyft when we were in London. And it was great interacting with them because there are a lot of people coming from different domains, different expertise. That's the best part about Lyft. Um, I, I, I had a great interaction uh, in London as well, where I got good connects, uh, you know, through uh, the the current, uh, you know, my Lyft uh, colleagues like you, and also uh, the cohort people, uh, you know, the alumni. What I'm actually looking for is, see, basically, I'm not doing a one-time sale over here. Um, I would need partnerships. I would need collaborations in tissue engineering field, in the field of cancer biology, or I, to, to put it in a simple way, anyone or everyone who's working on stem cells and tissues is what I'm looking at. Now, over there, the collaboration can work in different ways, right? Where we can help anyone who's researching on stem cells, give the software, hardware, and material support, right? And then there can be a technology transfer, uh, uh, you know, a discussion where... Uh, we can talk about royalties and, you know, we can talk about partnerships, getting into the market together. So what I'm looking out of Lyft network, because I know a lot of people come from medical background, uh, is a very good partnership or a collaboration where we can contribute in the form of, you know, hardware, software and materials. And what I'm expecting from the other end is to come up with a whole plan or I would say protocol. Uh, a medical protocol on how exactly to work on stem cells on tissues to cater to different end applications. So it is a win-win situation because we are already there. Uh, you know, we, we know the market right here. It's, it's just a matter of time where we expand this market, meet 
uh, a lot of people meet other is getting into the body people want to uh, remain silent about it uh, but uh, you know we as a company do respect the uh, uh, you know uh, the the uh, protection of all the ips that everyone has so we do respect that and we do work accordingly so that is why i think me and my team is the right team to collaborate whenever when it comes to stem cell research or tissue research because uh, we have extensive uh, experience in terms of giving engineering side of expertise uh, and that's where we play a major role so this is where uh, you know this is what i'll be looking from okay. i'm yet to connect uh, and you know discuss and take it forward cool Cool. Um, so, uh, so again, um, here you spoke about the partnership. You spoke about end to end, uh, like you know, it could be any kind of connection that could happen in in the medical domain. Uh, but, but do you have particular countries in mind for lifers? I mean, like, are you uh, are you having some countries in mind? I mean, like you know, in terms of okay, these are the countries from which I have my first priority with to connect with lifers. So, do you have these countries in mind? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm looking to start with, uh, you know, US, uh, UK, and obviously Canada, uh, Israel, to be very precise, because there's a lot of biomaterial research going on in Israel. I'm in touch with few over there, but uh, definitely looking for. So uh, in terms of collaboration and working with universities, I will, I would mention these countries, uh, UK to be precise, because of the extensive uh, you know, research institutes and universities working on this particular application. The US, to be very uh, precise, because there's a lot of, uh, I would say, after research thing which is going on over there. Canada, why? Because I'm already in touch with a couple of universities who is working on this particular field. Israel, to be very precise, uh, the work they are doing on the material side uh, really impressed me, and that's why I need, I want to, uh, you know, collaborate with them as well. So. Um, to sum up, you know, these are the few countries to start with, but going forward, I'd like to expand in terms of sales to uh, many more countries. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Amazing, Manish. Uh, so, so coming to my final perspective is like, you know, uh, so you've been part of the community, you've been seeing how Lyft Global Code is engaging and how we are trying to run experiments, uh, trying to just engage with the lifters. Uh, we are all diverse, we are across different uh, segments, as you said, uh, we are different time zones, uh, different perspective, different personalities. So what is one or maybe two activities that you think in your mind that can re-engage or like, you know, can, can have us all together and can have these, like, you know, the ideas and the flow and the connections going on. So what is your thought on that for the Lyft community to be active? Or like, you know, what activities could we be doing? Yeah, right. But, uh, that's a good question, Suraj. So uh, I think, see, first of all, everyone is busy with their own work because everyone's doing some amazing uh, inventions, uh, amazing startups, right? Uh, so I think uh, at the end of the day, everyone is looking for some output or, you know, like we call ROI. So a couple of things, one thing that immediately comes to my mind is, for example, uh, you know, anyone working on, you, you, you took the name of Edgar. I, I know he's working on something on the software side. Um, is working on uh, the ethical hacking things. So I think what would interest him is people coming from his industry. Let's say, uh, you know, uh, uh, Indian expert. Uh, so Suraj, you know, you are uh, in Gujarat, I am in, uh, you know, Bangalore. Uh, we have our own networks over here, right? So what if we, I, I remember, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of our uh, Lyft colleague, uh, Miguel, uh, who's working on waste management. Uh, one good thing that happened, uh, you know, right after I got back to India is he asked me to connect to few of the companies that he already recognized in South India to connect to him, right? So, uh, you know, that was his interest. So I think we should do, uh, a, a, I would say, a community-based or I would say a sector-based, uh, you know, meetups where uh, maybe, uh, you know, people like you, people like me get into a proper sector-based area. And where we call experts from India or from their respective countries to basically, you know, deliver their experience or give insights about the market because the way it helps Suraj, you know, that's very extensive because 
let's say uh, i get two experts from waste management in india uh, to miguel who is in mexico right uh, the insights that he will get from this market is vast so that way i think you know we are helping them understanding the market we are also helping them collaborating with these people if there is you know any uh, win win mutual benefits for both of them so i think that would make a lot of sense and uh, we can do this maybe couple of times a month where you know we can engage we can invite guests we can invite a domain specific uh, a successful entrepreneur or a businessman to you know have a word with these people and give them you know a bit of uh, tips and tricks on okay fine this is how it goes uh, this is how the market is this is how bullish you should be so you know i i think all of these uh, would make a lot of sense in terms of uh, you know benefiting to their own startups and also in terms of individually analyzing the market because here it is it's it's not about a transaction thing right it is about feedback and uh, more of give and take thing so i think that would be a brilliant thing that we can do uh, and it should be a collaborative effort suraj you know it's not about only suraj uh, you know trying to do this but all of them coming together from their own uh, you know expertise bringing in people and connecting it to other lifers i think that would be an amazing thing to do uh, right yeah i think perfect i think i love the idea of sector based thing because then that that creates sort of interest in terms of like you know uh, a, a, a set of uh lifers and then they could get together and form a cluster or form exactly. a group and then try to come out with certain perspectives and then they could be doing those activities or if everybody could be contributing in terms of like you know experts and then there could be conversations around it what's happening where and then it could be a very closed round table kind of a conversation maybe uh exactly. very yeah. uh, interesting aspect so i think amazing i think i think i'm, I'm going to definitely share these with the academy as well and 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 um, amanish has been amazing having you on the podcast and thanks for sharing your time and and, and you know all the thoughts about it and i'm sure that lifers are going to um, definitely go through these and then get perspective on what you're doing and the amazing stuff that you're doing and uh, uh, like you know best wishes to you and away and, uh, and 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 let's talk more when we connect in person as well thanks a lot suraj thanks for the opportunity and uh, i'll see you soon and thanks a lot perfect all right so thanks thank you